Karen and Tom here, living our life 4.0 along the beautiful Norwegian coast. All right, we are mostly around the peninsula of Stad. Got a little further to go. depart the Bulandet archipelago and head toward the Stadt Peninsula, which is about 50 miles north. Our goal for the next couple days is to safely pass outside of Stadt. Sounds simple enough, but this is one of those locales that has mariners shaking in their foul weather boots. I'll talk about why that is as we round those headlands tomorrow. Today, we're off to find an anchorage on this side of Stadt, so let's go. Got a dredging operation off over here. There's supposed to be a red and a green buoy through here, and we think they've pulled them up to do the dredging. Makes it confusing when you're going through. This is one of the many cruise ships that are a frequent sight in these waters. They take passengers into many of Norway's famous fjords and out to the special offshore islands. Most of these cruise ships operate year-round, since a very popular cruise is coming in the winter in hopes of seeing the northern lights. Personally, I would prefer one of these smaller options to the huge carnival cruise ships, which also go into some of the fjords, but are simply too big to get into many of the special island destinations. Uh, you can see the very top of the peak is still in the clouds up there. This is Hornelen, the tallest sea cliff in Europe, standing at 860 meters, or 2,820 feet, above sea level. Well, you can hike up to there. We're going to be anchoring around the corner from where that sailboat is down there. Um, but really, pretty incredible. This angle looks like a sort of like a knife edge all the way across there. So we've had a good sail for most of the day. We're motoring now. hardly any boats around at all. Um, like I said, we got a boat ahead of us, but it's been pretty much on our own. A little bit of exploring now into the more remote areas of Norway, but they still have their amazing waterfalls everywhere. Uh, quite a bit <laughs> higher than other peaks that we've seen. I think that's around 2,500 feet, so half a mile in height up to the top of there. So, really incredible. What a picturesque anchorage. Not only do we have front row seats to viewing the changing night sky around the towering Hornelen Peak, but these quaint Norwegian red buildings dotting the shore and reflecting into the surrounding calm waters are a beauty all to themselves.
Let's see, what time is it? It is like 20 till 10. It's around August 20th and the sky is still quite bright. It's pretty shocking. I guess we're getting north. We are heading north. Brr. It's cold out tonight. Well, it's not as cold as it often is, but i um, got my PJs on, so that's what makes it feel especially cold. Gorgeous night. The light is just so pretty on everything. There's all these cranes out here being totally active this morning. They're flying around. They're right up on top of the roofs over there. Looking around. They're a little mad that we uh, were in the middle of their fishing ground. All right, today's a big day. We're going around the peninsula that's called Stott. Some have to spell Stottland or Stottlandet. And if you look on the coastline of Norway, it may not seem like very much, but it's the dividing point between the North Sea and the north of there is the Norwegian Sea. Um, and But the other most important part about that is that it's a very uh, treacherous area in terms of currents and um, just a lot of very uncomfortable seas. It gets very, gets very stormy and um, a lot of waves and a lot of turbulence in that area. It's not obvious when you look at it on the coastline though, and, but we heard about this. The first time I heard about it was an interesting article I read about the fact that Norway was considering building a tunnel for ships to get around this peninsula. And it goes through, it's planning to go through kind of the middle of the peninsula and be able to handle cargo ships, which just blows my mind. I mean, they do amazing things here with putting tunnels everywhere between small islands, uh, and what would seem like not an economically sensible thing to do, but uh, building a tunnel that's tall enough and long enough to get through the peninsula is staggering to me. But it does show, um, definitely shows the um, importance of trying to maintain safe ship navigation in this area and the fact that it does get very violent seas in that area. So we have the uh, peninsula coming up here in about 15 miles. We came through an area called Malloy, down through that gap there. Pretty industrial um, urban area. A lot of large freighters and stuff coming through there. And uh, it is just a lovely rainy day today. So um, the weather's supposed to clear up a little bit. We might actually get a view of Stott when we go around it. But right now, it's pretty gray. We've got the main up. We're motor sailing for now. We should have some wind enough to sail here shortly. And uh, that's the plan of attack today is doing Stott. We'll be really happy to get around it. Um, after that, um, it should be quite mild for quite a ways up the Norwegian coast. The sea in this area is called the Stathavet Sea, and it is the most windswept part of Norway's coast. It is stormy some 100 days a year on average, leading ships to frequently wait out poor weather. See the video description for links to content describing the plans for a ship tunnel that will allow mariners to bypass this treacherous section of sea. Through researching the causes of the often extreme sea state near the Stat Peninsula, I learned about the Norwegian Trench which stops just shy of the peninsula and of the deep basins in the Norwegian Sea northwest of the turn in the coastline punctuated by Stotlandet. The average depth of the North Sea is around 100 meters, whereas the Norwegian Trench is two to three times as deep as that. The basin to the northwest of Stott quickly reaches 1,200 meters deep. If you consider the northern direction of the currents, the ever-changing salinity and therefore the density of these waters, from the introduction of waters from all of the fjords, plus the outflow from the Baltic Sea, and then add in the huge fluctuations in seabed depths, you can begin to understand the makings of a treacherous passage. Now consider the twice daily alterations caused by tidal flow and the variability that high winds can cause. And you can feel your heart rate rise enough to make you want to check your blood pressure. Got a lot of great layers of the rock here. You can see them all sort of folding over there and then closer and even there you can see them going vertical. 
way up on the peak beyond. Lots of great layers of rock up there too. some of the um, parts of the outer part of Stott there. A lot of it is shrouded in clouds. Um, but up inside here is the harbor of Honigswagen, which was our first um, destination from this morning. Um, it's kind of a safe harbor. You can anchor in there. There's a little tiny guest harbor. Not much there. No stores really. Uh, but it's just kind of a safe haven as you come around Stott. But the weather is working well for us, and um, we've got just the jib up right now, and uh, we've got Kern helping us out, which is all good. So we're gonna keep on going and curve our way around some of the islands up ahead here um, to get a little further progress today and get kind of completely out of the way of this peninsula of Stott so we can check it off the list and not have to worry about any kind of rough seas going forward here for tomorrow. This is the north coast of Stadtlandet and it's uh, pretty dramatic over on this side as well. Little development there and there's a couple little developments all the way around. It's quite a huge peninsula that sticks out and up ahead we are going in and amongst a couple islands. We are officially in North Norway. Stuck land that divides north and south uh, Norway. Alright, sun's out. And we have conquered the stand. How do you feel about that? Happy to get around it. Yeah, it's so nice. Mm -hmm. Pretty mellow. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. A little rolly for a little while until we got sailing. Coming up 10 degrees here. Shallow spot. Right Shallow there. spot right there. <clears throat> the is way down there. And we are far away from it. It feels pretty good. And what part of Norway are we in? We're in northern Norway. Northern Norway. As if Norway wasn't northern enough. This is some of the sites of the first part of northern Norway. A few little houses. And we are going down and around here to find a place to... Probably a marina that we'll tie up to tonight. After conquering Stat. And I've got some engine work to do tonight. Oil changes, fuel filters, and all that fun stuff. And we carry on going north in northern Norway. Get a little sense of scale, I guess. It's at least a foot across in diameter. Yeah, that's massive. Yeah. <sighs> We're up over the town by a little bit. We're each sucking air a little bit because we've got uh, COVID. I'm trying to get out and see how much energy we still have. Hi! Hello! We are loving these hikes into the Norwegian hilltops and fjord cliffs. 
you often hear that one of the drawbacks of living on a boat is the challenge to get enough exercise. This is especially true when we spend hours underway. However, a two-hour hike up these steep hills checks both the body movement and the cardio boxes for sure, and you certainly can't beat the views. Join us next time as we visit a fellow Genoa Sun Odyssey 440 owner in nearby Ulsteinvik. We get a personalized tour of his favorite nearby anchorages and passages before making our way into Storfjorden with a side trip to Cebu. Thanks for watching our Life 4.0 adventures. Until next time, make sure you're living your best life.